Hi everybody, it's Christopher and welcome to Life's Not Over, It Just Looks Different on YouTube. In this week's video, I sat down for a conversation with my friend Shelly Shelke to talk about some of her life hacks as a person with sight loss and how the busy wife and mother has also become an inspiration for women who want to know how to apply makeup as a person with sight loss. Um, thanks for having me. Yes, it's way overdue. Um, so, hey, my name is Shelly Shelke, and I am, well, gosh, I'm almost 43 now, but um, I was born with low vision. I was born with what they call optic atrophy, so I have lived my whole life with low vision um, and considered legally blind. So, well, if you want to go back 43 years or whatever, I just, because I was born with it, I was always able to figure things out as I go along. And, you know, optic atrophy just means that the optic nerve is damaged. So it's not sending my brain proper messages. So in other words, I can see everything, just not clearly. So I can often pass as a sighted person. So I think I spent most of my life trying to pass as a sighted person. And then if I couldn't, I'd find little sneaky hacks along the way. Um, so that, I guess that's my vision story for most of my life. Uh, I am married, just had our 21st anniversary. Uh, we have three children. Uh, they are 23, 20, and 18. And we find ourselves in a new adventure in life. The first 20 years, I ran a day home uh, in Red Deer, Alberta. And then we decided to move to Calgary. COVID just kind of did a number on us when it came to just everything. We're just like, oh, my God, we need something new. So um, we moved to Calgary. And I kind of realized once I was out of my own environment and no longer running a day home and trying to get a job that I'm like, oh, I can't see. <laughs> like I never for so many years, I just I was in my own environment and I had all my own little hacks and all of a sudden I find myself in an apartment building and I can't, I can't see the washer and dryer machines or so back to where I always memorize all of everything. Anytime something new, I memorize it. That's one of my hacks. So memorize the start button, just the buttons you need to know. I don't memorize the whole machine, but so I found myself in this new environment, um, needing to find work, but not wanting to go back into the whole day home world and so i decided to start selling makeup and that has really evolved um that has been super fun and i also have a part-time job um at a retail store called goodwill and i ended up at goodwill because i had a really hard time finding a job with my disability um, but goodwill is known for working with adults with disabilities that's their mission so that's my beginning to here in two minutes Wow. That, and that's already, that's a pretty like cool story. And I mean, I, you know, you and I've known each other a while, so I know a little bit about your story, but I love that you shared it again. And, and, but I want to tap into some of the things that you talked about. So, so let's, if you'll go back with me, tell me about running the day home and some of the hacks that you developed, you know, looking after a bunch of kids, like what, what age group of kids did you work with? And how did you sort of keep tabs on all of them without really making the eyesight an issue? Well, well, I mean, part of it, so part of my vision is when you're in a smaller environment, like a home would be a smaller environment. Um, everything is within close enough proximity that I can see. So sometimes I might get like a kid confused if I'm in the kitchen and they're kind of in the living room. It was like an open concept. Um, but like at the end of the day, I just walk a few feet, then I know which kid it is. You know, I also like the the saying is true. My eye, my ears and my nose work 100 times better than they should. So I depend a lot on my ears. I, I've just learned to always listen. And I mean, I think that goes um, for moms, too. But with the day home, if they were in the playroom downstairs and I was upstairs cooking, I'm always listening. And you just know, you know, the sounds, right? Um if, for instance, when when I would take them to the park, which we would go outside every day, and um, we had to cross a road, not a super busy road, but there is a crosswalk. And if you've ever noticed, um, at the crosswalk in Red Deer anyways, there's 
these lines on the cement that are like vertical and then there's like a horizontal line and that's a good three feet from the road so i teach the kids at a very young age like 18 months two years um that they have to stop on the secret line so once they all they go and once i i mean because i have them from the age of one till eight nine ten until they can stay home after school um once they know what the secret line is and they understand the freedom and the responsibility that comes with it, I would be like, okay, yeah, you can go, but meet me at the secret line. Of course, they're in the, my same line of view. Nobody's around the corner, but oh, they would. They were so good. They'd race to the secret line and they're all standing on the secret line. If somebody steps out, get back on the secret line. I mean, you know, you got all the kids being your own little, <laughs> own little policemen or whatever. So then we would cross together and then at the park, they just, they knew their boundaries and I would walk around and, you know, one kid might have a red jacket. And so you, you pick up more on colors and sounds and because you generally have older kids, you know what level they're at. So of course, if you have a one and a half year old, you're following them around. If you have three, four five, they're, they get their freedom, right? Like, mm -hmm. so yeah, those were some of my hacks for sure. That's that's really cool. And and I like that you touched on the color thing because I know that color it you know, yeah, if the kids are wearing bright colors or something, it makes them a little bit easier to track and find. Yes. Totally. Um, so so tell me a bit about that. Like do you do you have colors that you see better than others or do you kind of do you think you see all kind of all colors well, kind of equally? No. I mean, obviously primaries are a lot better. Um I find like even now at work, everything's color coded, which is marvelous. Mm -hmm. But like, ha, huh, when you get like a patterned shirt and I'm just like, oh, my eyes are like, what do I see? What do I see? Or even like if it's I'm just like, is this beige? No, it's gray. Oh, it's pink. No, it's purple. <laughs> like, I was like some days I'm just like, I just will like now I'm at the point where I'm at work and I'll hold up an item and I'll be like, it's this. Thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you get those like those pastels right the beige the tan the light gray the light green and sometimes i'll overthink it and i'll pick up like the undertone rather than what it actually is um mm -hmm. so but i mean generally speaking i think i live in a colorful world for sure yeah that's that's cool and and i can relate um primary colors are definitely much better for me too when we get into secondary colors it gets challenging totally um, and lighting also plays a role right like if you're in better you know better lighting helps to see the colors better if you're not in such good lighting it it can be challenging so uh, sure. yeah i can absolutely absolutely relate to that as well um in the now you mentioned that you memorize a lot of buttons on appliances and stuff like that so you know coming to your new environment that you're in now in calgary you know you kind of had to relearn things um have you ever used like markings for appliances and stuff like that like bump ons or anything of that nature or you know, mm -hmm. I didn't, it wasn't until um, I met you and we were doing the CNIB ambassador program and I was supposed to be an ambassador as a blind person, like, but literally I learned so much just from listening to all of you because I think those who lose their sight later in life <laughs> have so much more, um, I don't know, so much better ideas of how to, how to do things because you guys like all of a sudden had to learn where I've just always found my ways. I didn't even know bump mm -hmm. existed. So, nope, right. I've not used them. Have not used them. No. Um, and it's interesting you say that because, you know, I, I've thought about that from time to time as well, right? With, with you know, the, the differences between someone like myself who lost her sight later in life and somebody like you who's pretty much grown up with it you know, and, and just adjusted all the way along. I guess in some ways there's, there's good sides and bad sides to both, right? Like if, yeah. if you, for you, for instance, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but for you, I mean, this is just kind of the way things are and you just learn as you go, as opposed to somebody like myself who kind of had, kind of had to relearn, um, you know, how to do things, but, but having had the benefit of, you know, having seen it before, it, it definitely made it a bit easier, I think, um, in some ways. But uh, but the colors thing are still a challenge, uh, especially especially when the lighting's not so good. Um, yeah, so that's but but 
I've, I've always thought about it though, that I, I admire people who can figure out the life hacks and figure out ways to, to get around things and do things. So I, I think that's very cool. And I love your secret line story. I was hoping you were going to tell that today. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they they love it. <laughs> that was that was definitely one of my favorites, and I and I also agree. Um, not that I've ever run a day home. Good on you for being able to do that. Um, you know, having the kids sort of know and be able to almost police themselves. Uh, that's that's pretty cool too, right? So they become sort of your your extra eyes and ears. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, but it, but you also touched on something really interesting, and I wonder if you get this question. You know do people ask you that very often about, you know, because your eyes don't work as well, they ask you about your hearing and your smell, your sense of smell. And, you know, I, I know that you mentioned that they're a hundred times better, but do you, do you get that question much? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> sorry to stop. I'm just thinking over the years, like I think my kids, <laughs> mm -hmm. my kids have been like, mom, nobody smells like you or mom, you know, you hear way more or whatever. So I think, <laughs> They kind of pointed it out. And mm -hmm. then um, even like at a Goodwill, I I just, he I hear everything. Like, so mm -hmm. I think people don't realize sometimes I can hear or even I'll be like across the store. If it's not as busy and my fitting rooms aren't busy, um, I'll hear when one of my fitting room doors close. So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, somebody came out or somebody got put in, you know, so I'm, I'm always using my ears rather than my eyes. So are they better? I don't know, probably. Or am I just used to using my ears along with my eyes along? Well, one does not really need to use their nose as much as I do. Um, I'm continually assaulted with sense, <laughs> but like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was helpful in the day home if somebody soiled themselves. But other than that, sometimes I'm just like, okay, maybe I have an exceptional taste too, right? Because nose and taste work together. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if people ask me or if I just they just I think they just learn by knowing me that mm -hmm. they're like, OK, you can hear or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have to agree. Um, my my boss teases me occasionally about my supersonic hearing. Yeah, I sometimes hear stuff that she doesn't expect me to hear. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally. <laughs> I'm like, do they know I can hear? <laughs> Right. <laughs> yep. Totally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely times when I do that as well. It's like, yeah, I wasn't supposed to hear that. I'm not going to let them know that I did. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, but I, but now tell me about. So tell you already touched on a little bit about the makeup. Um, kind of. So walk me through that. Like, what inspired you to start doing videos teaching others how to do makeup? you know, uh, was it more about you showing what you could do or was it meant to be a teaching tool for others? Who knows? I have sold. If you know me, I, I, when I love something, I just love it. And I think it's mm -hmm. great. And mm -hmm. I often tend to love those products that are sold by somebody else. And I think when I started thinking about it, I love the, the service. Why? Because number one, I can't drive to the store. Number two, I can't drive to the store and I can't see what's at the store. So when somebody comes to me and says, hey, Shelly, you know, try these amazing seasonings, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, these are so good. I'm an Epicure fan. Tried to sell it. It didn't. I, I've literally sold everything. Um, but so anyways, when it came to the makeup, um, of course, I, with vision loss, it's really hard to do your makeup. So makeup has always been a struggle for me. And I just saw people doing it. And I was like, okay, wow, like, I think I can do that. Like that. I was like, I think I can do it. So that's just how I started using the product. Um, and then I've always, I have always enjoyed the social media aspect of what you can do with it. I, I find it very fascinating how you can share your stories. And like, I'm just very much into a lot of that, always have been. So I think I was just like, oh sure, I can do that. I'll try to sell it. I've sold everything. Why not? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just kind of started as that. And it was, I hadn't, didn't have a job yet. So it was definitely give me something to do. Um, gosh, it wasn't until, I mean, it evolves over time, right? Because talking in front of a camera is like, 
literally you're just sitting there talking to yourself and you're like, ha ha ha. And you're laughing at yourself. Like you got, you know what it's like, you got to get used to it. Mm -hmm. So eventually over time, once I got like all that figured out and where do I post, like there's so many places. Right. So that takes a while. And then last summer, um, actually back that up. So through the social media and then volunteering with CNIB, I have met so many other women who not only have vision loss, but have no clue how to do their makeup. And in this way, I do have such a great advantage because I was born with it. So I already had my weird little hacks in place. I didn't know they were hacks. And even though I wasn't super good at makeup, you know, obviously my hacks had evolved as I started using Saint and stuff like that. Um, So anyways, talking to them and them, they're asking me questions. I'm like, well, like I I don't feel like a guru, right? So um, I just kind of came up with this idea. What if I just started doing specific tutorials for blind women, which is now called mirrorless makeup tutorials, um, where I use a lot of verbal description and I'm still trying to get better. I'll rewatch and I'm like, that made no sense, Shelly. Like, it's just, it's, it's so fun. I really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I have a whole mirrorless makeup tutorial series and I have had amazing feedback and some women, like they'll find me just from the algorithm. Right. And they'll be like, Oh my goodness. This is so great. I have been searching for makeup tutorials and I can't find anything. And they all do it too fast. And she was saying and all this. And I was, you know, I'm like, really? Wow, that's so great. Like, of course, as a creator, you want to know somebody cares. Um, so then it started getting me thinking. I was like, OK, well, where do people really go to search tutorials? Well, they go to YouTube right? Like, yes, there's Instagram, but they go to YouTube. So then I started just doing my own searches on YouTube. And I mean, there is a massive gap when it comes to blind makeup teaching. There's almost nothing. And so I was like, whoa, I just kind of fell like, boom, right into this niche. And so I was like, I'd be really stupid to walk away from this. Um, So that's, I mean, like I said, it's all a work in progress and I do it all on my own. So I'm currently trying to re um, make over my YouTube channel. I've got some like thumbnails that are a lot nicer. Like just, mm-hmm. I didn't know what a thumbnail nail was like a week ago. And then Mitch is like, mom, you really need to clean up your thumbnails. That's my son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I go on Canva, like it's just, and it's painful, man. I got my iPad and I'm looking my, at my iPad through the magnifier on my phone. <sighs> but then, you know, I quickly memorize the icons that I need to touch. Voila. That's how Shelly does things. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so that's, and I still teach women. I have women, um, I have blind clientele and I have women who aren't blind because there's lots of women who just are feel lost too, right? Makeup is a big, vast, scary world for a lot of people. So I have, I have both worlds, but this, Um, niche that I have has been such a blessing to me while I'm blessing others. Um, I just had a lady um, message me or comment the other day that, and she doesn't use Saint particularly, but she just said, I haven't been wearing makeup. And she just said, since I've been watching your tutorials, I have grown in confidence. And she's like, I've been doing my makeup and I take selfies and I zoom in to see. And I was like, oh, that's so great, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't even remember what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I answered it. You did an amazing job. And I, I love the excitement. I love the the enthusiasm. Um, and I'll admit, I, I do follow your channel because I love the story, some of the stories that you tell. I don't necessarily get into the makeup tutorials because, well, there. nobody's ever done my palette, you know, so right. I, just, I, okay. well, I don't, I, that's what I'm there for. <laughs> I don't know what my colors are, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but I do, um, I, this is amazing. I mean, I love how you've, you know, found that niche and how you've inspired others and, and how you're, you know, you're, you're, you're finding that that niche for yourself and filling that gap at the same time, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, if there's a gap there, instead of waiting for somebody else to fill it, time for you to fill it, right? Like, right? if I'm it's just, something of interest to you. Yep, totally. Yeah, so I, I think that's really amazing. And I think it's, uh, that's, 
that's part of why I was hoping to talk to you today because I thought, well, you got to, we, we just got to tell the, you know, a lot more people about the great things that you're doing. And, and I love your energy and I love your excitement for, for doing it. And, and so how do you, so I want to touch on that a little bit. I mean, sure. how does that feel for you being a bit of a role model now or, or being, you know, that kind of that go-to person? Um, <laughs> I don't feel like a role model, to be honest. I, I often just feel like a noob. <laughs> A noob mm -hmm. hacking my way along. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I just feel grateful that I'm able to bless others and help others. And I didn't, because I live so much of my life pretending I didn't have a disability or not necessarily needing to acknowledge it or whatever, um, just realizing now there's this whole other community of people just that connection alone has been amazing. And then of course, I mean, we're women. We all want to feel beautiful and it's hard and we live in a hard world. And so that's been a blessing. And then it's really made me think, um, like for instance, they kept wanting me to make a mascara video. It's like, well guys, I, I don't know. Like I've just always put on mascara. So I was like, okay, what are my steps? How do I put a mascara? Well, it turns out, yeah, I do. I got hacks. <laughs> like, so I made a mascara tip video. I'm like, these are the things I do, man. But I realized, well, if you like put all of these things together, that's like five tips in a row, right? So mm -hmm. it's good. It gets me thinking outside the box and connecting. And I'm I'm a total extrovert. So anytime I get to meet somebody, talk to somebody, teach somebody, share with somebody, converse, anything, I'm all in. So, yeah, that's, that is so cool. And I, and I actually, I, something that I heard in what you just shared is it's neat how, you know, other people asking you the question sort of made you go back and revisit your process. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. and sort of, you know, something that's been pretty, probably pretty automatic for you that you figured out as one of your life hacks, Yeah, you know, so long ago you know, you, you go back and you're like, wow, okay. Yeah, that is how I do stuff. And that is how I've been able to do it. Um, but I, and I, I want to visit something else that you said, cause I'm I'm curious about this. And I know that I've had my own experience with this is, you know, talk to me about like your comfort level with your sight loss now, as opposed to maybe, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, like, or, or even younger, what, like talk to me about sort of, you know, that, that time of, of, you know, when you didn't really want to, you just wanted to be as normal as everybody else, whatever that means, um, versus sort of growing within your sight loss and getting more comfortable with it. Where, where's, how's that been for you? Um, I guess it's just been a journey. I, I've always been like a fairly like self-aware, fairly confident person, um, like I had the successful day home, so it didn't matter to me. My vision didn't matter. Right. So I do always, um, kind of approach life, maybe a little more confident than I should. <laughs> like when I moved here, I was like, Oh yeah, I'll get a job. Um, and then realizing, Oh, <laughs> there's lots of, lots of things that might be a problem <laughs> with my vision. And of course there's lots of things I can do, but just kind of slowly realizing and, I think I did have to go through a little like grieving process all these years later and realizing that, okay, well, you are, you do have a disability, Shelly. And um, I remember I wasn't finding a job. And so I was trying to get on, like get some support and they denied me. And I was like, well, like if you're denying a legally blind person, like anyway, so I was just in tears. I'm like, I'm trying, I don't want to not work. You know, so I definitely, I think that journey brought me through um, kind of the grieving process and then just talking about it. And I mean, now um, my job at Goodwill has really just, um, really, I just don't care anymore. Like once in a while, I still don't love it. But um, I have a magnifying glass that I use at work to read tags and stuff like that. And you know, at first I was like, oh, I don't like this, but I just I have to do it. Now I don't even care. Um, and now I find when I'm in public, I'll go to reach into my vest pocket, you know, the muscle memory to get on my mm -hmm. magnifying glass. <laughs> I'm 
I'm like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> Crap. So I'll get on my phone and it's so much longer to pull out a magnifier and everything. So, um, you know, that's kind of been my journey. And now talking about it through social media, like I had people in my life that didn't even know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. my poor day home parents are like, what? Um, yeah. So I did. There's people who didn't know. And then the people that I grew up with, they were so used to my function level. They're like, I always forget that you mm -hmm. can't see, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just it's a journey and it's still been a journey, but it's also been really refreshing just sharing my story and how I see and not trying to hide it or, you know. Yeah. I, I'm glad that you're sharing it. I really am. I'm glad that you share it through your videos. I'm glad that you've shared it when you and I've been able to do presentations together. Um, I, I think your story is amazing. I think you do, uh, you know, I think you've done a great job of figuring out some of your life hacks. Um, although I, I, I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but when, when people say to me that, you know, they forget about my sight loss, kind of feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, oh, Totally. Right. It feels right. like you've got this and you're just knocking their socks off. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, but can you actually read the menu to me? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just a lot quicker if you use your eyes. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, and I, and I do, I have fun with it. Um, when I'm talking to, uh, you know, my, my new teammates, I've been in this gig this, I'm in now for six months and occasionally I'll say to them, you know what, I, can I borrow your eyes for a sec? You know, because mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just so much faster than digging out my magnifier or trying to figure out, you know, because maybe my zoom on my screen isn't working quite well or something, right? Like so sometimes it's 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 nice to hitch a ride on somebody else's eyes, but oh, it's also... I have a good story. Go on. Tell me. Go ahead. <laughs> tell me. I just so this is another example of my hacks that mm -hmm. didn't work yesterday at work. So normally I, see, I go to work and we have a lunchroom. It's great. We've got microwaves. And generally speaking, when you approach a microwave, you can usually press the number one and you get a minute. And usually the bottom right is start. The bottom left is stop and clear, right? Like there's kind of these general rules that I've learned over the years. And I was right. So I always just come, press one. I got a minute. Boom, done. Shelly's out of there. So yesterday, I don't know what I was doing wrong. I don't know what the microwave was doing. And I press one and it runs for a second. It's like, what? So then I press the bottom left and it's not clearing. And I'm like, oh, and I mean, I could just pull up my phone and read it, but the buttons are all faded. And so I go and I ask my manager, I'm like, can you help me with the microwave, please? <laughs> and so I tell her and I'm like normally I just do this and it works and she comes and she presses one and it goes and I was like I don't know man it wasn't working I promise <laughs> and they're just <laughs> laughing at me and I was like you don't get it mm -hmm. my hack wasn't working and it was annoying <laughs> yeah <laughs> well there are there are days when just as much as we try to figure think that we have this down Sometimes Mother Nature just gets in the way and makes it challenging, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with it? It's broken. Yeah. And well, and the other part of it too, I mean, let's face it, you know, stuff always works better when you bring somebody else to check it out for you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as you call in somebody who can probably fix it, it suddenly starts working again. And, you know, the problem, yeah. the problem no longer exists. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, sometimes it's user error, but you know, sometimes it's just, no, I, I truly believe that, you know, it was given you one second for whatever reason, you know, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, but that's, but I, but I also, you know, I, I feel your pain because it's like, ah, it works every other time. Why not today? Right. right? Well, you just want to <laughs> look normal for a minute. <laughs> like, Come oh. on. <laughs> I just wanted to microwave lunch, man. Don't make this hard. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So, yeah. No, this has been really great, Shelly. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you, Shelly, sharing some of these stories and, and uh, you know, and, and being able to to just share, you know, the, the positive things that you found out of, out of your sight loss and how you just managed to keep going and that it doesn't hold you back. Um you know, I know you said it took a little time to find, to find, 
employment here in Calgary, but you did. Uh, but that's been amazing. You know, I think I, I saw the video that they did about you. Um, and uh, talk to actually tell me about that. Tell me what that was like for you to 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 do the sh- the video shoot and then to see the video when it was all done. Um, yeah, so they I was actually like on a CTV commercial as um, because their mission is to employ adults with disabilities. Not only do we employ them, but um, Goodwill, 89 cents of every dollar actually goes directly to adults with disabilities. So it's Goodwill is a huge umbrella and the amount of stuff that they run under the retail stores is phenomenal, actually. Really cool company. So, um, whoa. Where was I going with that? Oh, okay. So they opened up a new center and um, they just, because I'm so like vocal and stuff, they're like, Shelly, can you come kind of be, I always laugh and say I'm the mascot because I'm like the disabled mascot. (laughs) So I'm always kind of calling myself that. So I did that. And then um, when I was there, they were like, hey, um, the Goodwill marketing team would like to follow you around at work. And so I was like, well, yeah, of course. So they came and um, he was like, okay, we'll just follow you around and ask you a few questions at the end. I was like, oh, but can I talk? (laughs) Like, can I explain things? He's like, well, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like whatever you want. Right. So, um, yeah, I just kind of took them through work and uh, how I do things. It was so much fun. um, And I think it was just really enlightening. Um, for other people to see what it's like and how we just make those adjust adjustments. And for me, um, the whole working at Goodwill, it was really interesting learning how my eyes and my brain work together to um, get the job done. It's, it's not going to look the way somebody else did it, especially at first. But, you know, when you walk, you know what it's like when you walk into an environment and there's a million shapes and it's a new environment, and you have not one clue what any of those shapes are you're like whoa like you're just hoping you're not gonna run into anything right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. um so even just as my eyes are like that's a buggy you know then or like my eyes see something and then my brain is like that's a buggy I'm like oh that's a buggy you know so now you know the shape is a buggy or the black basket on the floor now I know that's a black basket not I can't always see that it's a basket but just how your brain and your mind work together so that you just all that blur recognition comes together and works for you. So that was, it was super neat to just kind of like explain some of that to them. The one day I was like, I was working, I was like, I say to a coworker, I'm like, what's that on the floor over there? Cause it looked like a large mass to me, but I didn't want to walk up. I don't know what it was. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, that's a person tying their shoe. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I shall not bug them. (laughs) You know, but they were far enough away that I just was like, that shape does not belong there. It's not normally there. What in the world is it? (laughs) So just, yeah. So anyways, they followed me around and then we got to um, ask questions about how my vision works. And I wasn't sure because it was quite long. So I wasn't sure how he was going to put it together. But the... um, marketing director he did such a beautiful job of creating a youtube video and watching it brought tears to my eyes just um yeah i think just being like oh that's me that's my story (laughs) it's a little bit of Mm -hmm. my story that's how i see Mm -hmm. you like Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was a very cool opportunity i was really appreciative that he took so much time to develop it and he didn't miss anything and yeah it was really good i I'm so glad that you had that experience. And I saw the video too, and I thought you did amaz- an amazing job. Um, I, I loved how you talked about, you know, being able to see sort of the shape of words to recognize them. That one yeah. of those, again, one of those little hacks, right? Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you sort of, um, yeah, you sort of recognize a word just by the shape of it. You know what those letters in combination look like. Yes. And, you know, and then you can sort of not have to pull out your magnifier right in that moment. Um, I don't very often anymore, to be honest. Like, Mm -hmm. it's amazing how your brain memorizes this says, you know, plus sizes, this says active wear, blah, blah, like, because it's different lengths. Like, yeah, it's really incredible. 
So no, it's mm -hmm. it's pretty neat. So they're probably like, how can Shelly read the tags now without the magnifying glass? <laughs> I just always <laughs> keep them in keep them in wondering, like, what is she doing now? And then they'll be like, oh, Shell, don't don't trip on that or don't run into that. I'm like, oh, thank you. They're so sweet. I can totally see that somebody's there. But anyways, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> good people. <laughs> That's uh, that sounds amazing. I'm I'm glad that you've got that environment. I'm glad that you've got those people around you, and uh, you know that kind of support that's there when you need it. Um, but I also I also think it's very very cool that you have been able to sort of you know find your own level of comfort in the environment, figure out your own things, and and get more comfortable with it. And yeah, if you have to pull out your magnifier a little less often because you're you know you're into a groove in the environment now. I, I think that's really, really amazing. Um, so I'm, do you, just before we wrap up here, Shelly, do you have any, do you have anything that you want to share? Anything that you, that we haven't touched on or any, any sort of, you know, if you could share one message about your life with sight loss or what you'd want other people to know about sight loss, what would it be? Oh, wow. Oh gosh. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's a speed bump, you know, and sometimes it's, there's lots of speed bumps <laughs> as we figure stuff out. And sometimes there's less, um, but a lot of the times you can get from A to B, it just might take you an extra minute, <laughs> you know? And like, I, another thing I find with people is like, I grew up with it. So I am very accustomed to asking for help if I need something or if I need a ride or, you know, and I'm very vocal, but I think a lot of people, if they lose their sight later, they're more shy about it. They're more nervous. You know, it's just like, just ask for help. Like there's never been a person that said, no, there's never been a person. I mean, maybe when I was a teenager, people would make comments. Right. But like as an adult, nobody's like, what, why can't you see that? Or, you know, people are very willing to help and lend a hand and be your eyes or, or whatever the situation is. I find people pretty good. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's that's very cool. And I agree. I, I agree that, yeah, if people sometimes, I've been environment, in environments where sometimes, you know, I've asked questions, especially if I don't have my cane with me, because I do use my cane a little more now than I used to. And there was times when I didn't have my cane with me and I would ask somebody, well, where do I find this? And they, for a moment, they would kind of look at me quizzically, especially if they didn't know me, right? And then I'd say, well, you know, sorry, uh, thanks very much for doing that. I'm a person with sight loss and, and I don't really, uh, you know, I, I couldn't see that. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, no, absolutely. It's over there or whatever. Like it's, yeah. you know, and, and it's, yeah. I, I So I've had some strange looks, but once I explain it, they're like, oh, okay, then they get it. And then, you know, they they think I'm less um, clueless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But it's, but it's really, you know, it's not, and I'm not asking the question because I'm, because I'm just don't get it. I'm asking the question because I actually really need to know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's awesome. I, I really appreciate you Shelley, sharing that with me, Shelly. And thanks for, thanks for telling your story today. I appreciate it. This has been so much fun. It's been so nice to talk to you again and, and so nice to um, just, you know, hear, hear how things have been going with the makeup. I, like I said, I've seen your videos and I, I think you're doing an amazing thing. And I know you said you don't quite feel like one, but I absolutely think you're a total role model. And oh. I'm very happy to know you. Thank you. And thanks for having me. I'm, like I said, if somebody could just pay me to talk, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always happy to talk and camera. Well, that's a bonus, right? So, yeah, <laughs> I love being well, on here and catching up. <laughs> As, as your audience keeps growing, not, but just might happen for you. So just keep doing what you're doing because you're doing an amazing job. Yeah, follow me at Blind But Blended. <laughs> as you can see from this photo, in my one and only attempt to put on lipstick for a charitable event a few years ago, you're much better off getting makeup tips from Shelly. So check out her Instagram channel, her Facebook, her YouTube, Blind But Blended. I really do appreciate everyone who watches these videos, who's clicked like down below or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for doing so, and I hope you have a wonderful day.